Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Checkdown Info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. He looks tired. And today I want to talk about uh, 5G and Wi-Fi and their actual health effects. My last video was about a little cute little USB powered light that you could plug into a Wi-Fi router and uh, it'll remind you that your Wi-Fi router is on. You can turn it off later. Naturally, this caused all kinds of discussion on the video, and um, I realized that I, I think it was about 10 years ago, I actually read some studies about the effects of Wi-Fi and cell phone signals. And now someone asked me about 5G, and I realized that like I hadn't actually read any of the scientific literature in quite a few years, and um, I certainly hadn't actually seen anything about 5G yet. So I decided to go digging and I found some interesting stuff. So first I'm gonna go over a little bit about Wi-Fi because it's actually directly related to 5G. Um, okay, first a quick little recap. Um, all right, so you have Wi-Fi, which is typically 2.4 gigahertz. There's also a five gigahertz version of Wi-Fi. There is soon a 60 gigahertz version of Wi-Fi coming. Uh, 4G cell phone networks use, usually it's 1.8 or 1.9 gigahertz. And the 5G system, um, so far no one really seems to know exactly what it's going to be, but supposedly it's going to be millimeter wave, which means it'll be like, you know, between typically 30 to 300 gigahertz, which is like really, really high frequency. Um, that's the range of frequencies that like those uh, millimeter wave body scanners use. I'm pretty sure it's also the frequency at which those those non-lethal weapons that make it feel like your skin is on fire, pretty sure those are the same, the same frequency band. Um, and uh, yeah, it's supposed to be, 5G is supposed to be everywhere. Uh, right, so as I said in my previous video, I don't use wireless mice, I don't use Bluetooth, I don't use Wi-Fi, uh, unless I absolutely have to. I turn my cell phone off when I go into my house. Um, cell phone coverage where I live is very, very crappy. I'm happy about that. And yeah, so I pretty much avoid it. And after reading these studies, I've decided that was a wise choice. So, uh, first I'm going to talk about Wi-Fi, because as I say, as you'll see, it ties directly into 5G and blah, 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 so bear with me. This is going to get a little hairy. Um, I have two papers here from, uh, it's a, a scientific journal published by El Sevier. It's the journal Environmental Research. This is a journal that's been around since 1967. Uh, it's a scientific journal, peer-reviewed. And um, yeah, there's a couple papers in it, um, actually several papers, but uh, one of them is about, one of them is called Wi-Fi is an important threat to human health. And uh, the other one, uh, this one is actually several articles, but the first one is 5G wireless technology. Is 5G harmful to our health? So uh, first, the Wi-Fi one, because you're gonna wanna hear this. So this is this particular paper in this journal is called Wi-Fi is an Important Threat to Human Health, and it was uh, by uh, Martin Paul from Washington State University. And I'm just going to go through a few things in here. As I said, it gets very, very hairy. Like, there are things like, the main pathophysiological effects of EMF exposures are produced by excessive calcium signaling and the peroxynitrite pathway. Peroxynitrite levels are elevated because both NO and superoxide are elevated by by increased CA2 plus in square brackets with an I on the end. I don't know what that means. With NO and superoxide reacting with each other to form peroxynitrite. Right, did you understand that? Yeah, me neither. But the point is, I understand the technical aspects and the health, biochemistry, that kind of stuff. Not too sure what they're talking about, but um, it goes into a whole lot of detail. I'll put links to the descriptions in these in these uh, for for these uh, papers, so you can you can read them yourself if you want to. But um, as I say, it gets a little hairy. I'm gonna try to just hit the key points and kind of summarize and make some comments along the way. So. So, Wi-Fi is an important threat to human health. Uh, in the abstract, he starts off with repeated Wi-Fi studies show that Wi-Fi causes oxidative stress, sperm testicular damage, neuropsychiatric effects including EEG changes, apoptosis, which is cell death, uh, cellular DNA damage, endocrine changes, and calcium overload. Sounds good, right? Um, 
And then carrying on here, he says that five properties of non-thermal EMF effects are discussed. Let me make a comment about that because I have been saying for years that it is not the thermal effects of Wi-Fi and cell phone networks, 4G, 5G, whatever, that are the problem. So what do we mean by thermal effects? Well, you buy a smartphone, right? And the smartphone usually has a SAR rating, S-A-R, that's specific absorption rate. And what that actually means is they do some standardized tests. And this test is actually measuring how much radio frequency energy is being absorbed like by your head or your body and they're specifically looking at a heating effect. It's very similar to you have a microwave oven which operates at 2.45 gigahertz I think. But a microwave oven is like a thousand watts, right? So you have a smartphone which is you know usually transmitting at uh, 1.9 gigahertz or something. Um, you may have Wi-Fi that's 2.4 gigahertz, but the power levels we're talking about here are way the hell lower, like like 10,000 times lower than a microwave oven. So the typical sort of disclaimer saying that things like Wi-Fi and cell phone signals are not bad for you, the typical disclaimer is, yeah, but the heating effects are negligible and they're very, very low, so therefore it doesn't give you brain cancer, it doesn't give you tinnitus, it doesn't drive you crazy, and it, you know, all that kind of stuff. So he, in, in this paper, what Paul is saying is that there are, uh, he, he, discuss, he discusses the, the effects of, the non-thermal effects of Wi-Fi signals on the human body. In other words, he's saying that, yeah, this SAR and all this other stuff that they're actually measuring to tell you that it's safe, that's actually not the part that's, that's causing you harm. That's actually the absolute least important part. So that's important to keep in mind. Uh, so just going along here, I'll try to keep this quick and get to the 5G stuff. Um, he highlights that this paper is not focused on anecdotal reports, but rather on 23 controlled scientific studies of such health-related effects in animals, cells, including human cells, in culture, and in human beings. Uh, then he has a list of, of some of the effects. Uh, I've mentioned some of them already, but there are a couple extra ones listed here, which are just absolutely fabulous. Um, one of the supposed effects of Wi-Fi exposure is the lowering of melatonin levels, which disrupts your sleep. Uh, the disruption of microRNA expression in the brain. Okay. Abnormal postnatal development. That one's fun. Uh, apparently, it disrupts the development of the teeth. A Wi-Fi can also supposedly cause cardiac changes, blood pressure disruption, and erythrocyte damage. And this one, this one I thought was particularly fascinating. Apparently, there is a study showing that uh, Wi-Fi can actually stimulate the growth of adipose stem cells, which literally means that Wi-Fi might be making you fat. Okay, that's, he's got all the studies listed here. I'll show you in a minute. Sounds good, yeah? So, okay, skipping over a lot of stuff here, he goes on and says, um, uh, this is a key point, Wi-Fi and other wireless communication EMFs, EMF is radio waves, right? Um, Wi-Fi and other wireless communication EMFs are pulsed, leading to larger biological impacts. These EMFs are also polarized, also producing larger effects. Dose response curves are often both nonlinear and non monotone. So, what the heck does all that mean? What he's saying is that if you have like a, a 2.4 gigahertz Wi Fi signal, and if you're testing to determine the health effects, if you're using like a pure sine wave, that's obviously not good enough because all these digital systems, Wi Fi, 4G, 5G, you know, Bluetooth, they all use digital signals. They're modulated using fancy sounding schemes. And so, effectively, what you have is a pulsed gigahertz frequency of pulsed microwave frequency uh, signal that's hitting your body and that makes a difference. Uh, he also says that um, the polarization of the waves makes a difference. Polarization, easy way to think about it is if you have an antenna like this that's transmitting and you have a receiving antenna like that, okay that's one polarization. If you rotate both antennas 90 degrees that's a different polarization and this determines all kinds of crazy things and anyway antenna like this, antenna like that. That's polarization. This, you know, that's the easy way that you can, you can, you can have two antennas and if two of them are transmitting like this at the same frequency and two are transmitting like that, 
you can basically send the two signals at the same time and the orientation of the antenna actually matters. And of course the orientation of the antenna determines how the waves propagate and all other this complicated nonsense, but um, he essentially he's saying that that also needs to be taken into account, and it's not. Uh, so pulsed, yes, that's important. Polarized is important. And he also remarks that uh, dose response curves are often both nonlinear and non-monotone, which means that more or less that when many tests are done, it's showing like a, they'll do like a test of like a low level of Wi-Fi over a long period of time. And what he's saying is that, no, 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 what studies have shown is that your exposure comes in like, they're like peaks and valleys, and that that is actually more harmful to the body than a continuous dose, a continuous ongoing dose. Um, furthermore, I think he mentions later in the article that many of the tests that are done are for like two hours or five hours, like a very short amount of time. And in fact, most people are actually exposed to Wi-Fi and cellular signals like literally 24 hours a day now. Um, and then on top of that, you have this varying dosage level, which actually causes more problems. So that was pretty interesting. Um, then he goes into how EMF effects are often cumulative and irreversible. Uh, he writes, we have therefore reason to think that such effects as brain damage to animal brains, neuropsychiatric effects in humans, reproductive dysfunction in mice, and mutational effects are each cumulative. Those same effects may be completely or largely irreversible. <clears throat> One thing that this should tell us is that short-term Wi-Fi studies, he has a table of them here, short-term Wi-Fi studies may greatly underestimate the damage Wi-Fi may do over much longer time periods. So that whole list of, of problems that these studies have shown that Wi-Fi causes, like, you know, uh, it damages, you know, your testicles and melatonin and screws with your heart and your brain and everything. Um, he's saying that, that those actually may be an, a, a vast underestimation of the effects that it's having uh, because the the exposure is cumulative and this is especially problematic if say you have like a young child who you know there's Wi-Fi all over schools you know if you're like me and you're an old dude then you know I was not exposed to that for the first you know couple decades of my life for the most part right uh, someone who's you know five ten years old they've been exposed to it well, longer than that they've probably been exposed to it their entire lives and as we'll see that's actually also quite problematic so quickly moving along here uh, next up, funnily enough, he says, Wi-Fi and other EMS may be particularly damaging to young people. Um, and he, he, he writes that most of the arguments that have been made about uh, Wi-Fi being more damaging to, to children is because of the size of their skulls and the thickness of their skulls and it's re basically related to uh, exposure of the brains to the EMF and again kind of heating effects and um, what he's saying is that these various studies that have been done have shown that uh, because such stem cells occur in much higher cell densities in children and because the Wi-Fi appears to negatively impact stem cells and by the way stem cells are the cells in your body where basically your body can take that cell and it can turn it into any other kind of cell and stem cell therapy is a very big thing um, I'm not sure it's totally kosher in like the US and, and yet but <clears throat> in many other countries there's a lot of stuff going on I actually know people who've had stem cell therapy and they claim uh, it works miracles I think like Steven Tyler had stem cell therapy Joe Rogan had stem cell therapy like a bunch of people have uh, Mel Gibson's dad had stem cell therapy and it's like oh my god I'm healed so what they do is they basically take cells from like your bones or some part of your body and they put it in another part and it like literally your body literally will those stem cells literally rebuild like a joint for example uh, so instead of like you know replacing a joint with a synthetic you know ball and rack and pinion what, <laughs> whatever they will stimulate your body to regrow its own tissues and structures and boom you're healthy um, now naturally we have these stem cells we get fewer and fewer of them as we get older and what what uh, these studies are showing is that Wi-Fi basically hurts those stem cells and this is particularly problematic in children because you get fewer and fewer stem cells the older you get so if you're hitting those stem cells and, and damaging them with Wi-Fi when you're a kid you're going to have a lot more long-term health problems, basically, theoretically. That's what the studies show. Possibly. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, 
then he goes on, I'm, I'm not going to go into this, this is crazy, because the next section is how do EMF exposures lead to non-thermal health impacts? I've already talked about that, that the non-thermal thing is, is, he goes into this like really long description about like, holy cow, it's about uh, static electrical fields and static magnetic fields could be blocked by calcium channel blockers, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's all about the Wi-Fi apparently affects your cells directly, um, something related to voltage-gated calcium channels. And I'm not going to go into that, but, like, the dude, these people have, like, done these studies, and, like, it's extremely thorough, and it's very scientific. I mean, it's like... I'm amazed that, like, no one seems to actually care because, like, yeah, it's all right here, so... Um, yeah, and then he goes, I mean, he goes on and on, and there's, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff about the VGCCs, and, but he basically, like, outlines, um, he and his other colleagues who've done these other studies, he puts it all together and says, like, here is the mechanism by which the non-thermal effects of Wi-Fi and cell phone signals are damaging the body. Um, so yeah, that's it's really really technical. Um, gets into a lot of medical and biochemical stuff, but like it's you know sounds pretty convincing to me. Uh, blah 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 blah. So he talks about more stuff and um, ah yeah, this is interesting. There was another study by Believ Believ uh, anyway, this study discusses microwave hearing, and um, this other study, he discusses findings showing that people can hear microwave fields that are pulsed, including pulsed low-intensity EMFs. Now, the interesting thing here is that um, certain conditions, such as tinnitus, like ringing in the ears, they actually have been found to involve this VGCC activity. So basically, what this other study is saying is that... Um, it's entirely possible, more research would need to be done, but it's entirely possible that if Wi-Fi is effect affecting these VGCC thingies, that that is actually causing ringing in the ears. So what that means is that there's some scientific evidence here saying that those people who say, oh, I get like ringing in my ears whenever the Wi-Fi is turned on, yeah, they may not be crazy after all, because like people have done research on it and like, yeah. So. Okay, so move along, move along, move along. Right, so that's uh, uh no, we've got we've got one more page here. Ah, yes. So he also at the end of the paper he goes into another study. Um, there was a study in 2013 done by Foster and Mulder, and this paper is one of the ones that's typically used to argue that no, 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 Wi-Fi is safe. And he says basically that hang on a minute. Um, their paper argues that there are no and cannot be any health effects of Wi-Fi, but the first seven and a half pages of the paper are largely irrelevant because they're basically talking about predicted peak out power output, incident power density, the FCC, international safety guidelines, basically what I've talked about already about the SAR rating and all that kind of stuff. Because um, he's basically saying, no, based on all these other studies, uh, it's already been established that the thermal effects are not the relevant mechanism of they're not the way that, that, that Wi-Fi and, and cell phone signals are actually harming you. Uh, it's actually the non-thermal effects and these VGCC activation thingies that's, that's actually the main cause. So basically, the SAR rating is totally useless, and that's what, like, you know, the FCC says no, you know, or not the FCC. Somebody, health organization says, no, no, you have to have the, you know, power limits and this and that, and oh, but if the SAR rating is low enough, it's perfectly safe. And that's what the industry uses to say, no, no, this phone is perfectly safe. And what these people are saying is, no, actually, has nothing to do with the power levels. It has to do with, with the, other, the other aspects of the signal, the polarization, the pulse nature of the signals, the effect it has on all these different structures in the body, and so on. Um... Then he just goes on and says, um, so he talks about some additional flaws of these, of um, some, some other, seven other Wi-Fi studies. Uh, and he says that they, um, some, of the, some of the ways in which they were kind of like very poorly done is um, they have like six antenna in a reverberation chamber. And they were basically arranged in such a way that the polarization effects of, of the Wi-Fi was greatly reduced. So they basically cheated. Um, in also they used one millimeter wires to produce uh, reverberation reflections, which is another way of like it's part of like testing stuff. 
uh, and he says these structures are clearly very different from those found in genuine Wi-Fi. So even the, more or less the types of, an, of antennae that they're using were not the kind that real Wi-Fi uses, which actually made it seem less bad than it really is. Um, also, the signals that they were feeding into these antennae, which were not the right kind, were apparently not true Wi-Fi signals, so they weren't actually testing like the pulsed aspect of the signals, and they were basically, again, kind of cheating, because they were focusing on, not necessarily cheating, but they were focusing on power levels, and not focusing on the actual nature of the Wi-Fi signals and the potential effects that, that can have. So, and finally, each of these seven studies used only a tiny number of animals in each group studied, so statistically, he argues, they're pretty much useless. So these are the studies that were basically arguing that Wi-Fi is totally cool and it's perfectly safe. Now, I just want to show you this real quick, because this is the, this right here, this is funding. This research did not receive any specific grant from funding agencies in the public, commercial, or not-for-profit sectors. Now this this section starting right here, this is his references. This is all the crap that's referred to in that paper. Hang on, keeps going. Wait, wait, not done yet. Okay, there we go, we're done. So yeah, that's, that's that paper. And uh, yeah, it sounds pretty, pretty good to me. Pretty scary. So, okay, moving along, there's another article. This is actually a series of articles, again, in uh, the journal Environmental Research, and I found this on the page of one Joel M. Moskowitz, PhD, who is the director for Center for Family and Community Health, School of Public Health, University of California, Berkeley. Um, I think this is his blog, and he has a link to all these papers, which uh, most of which are, again, in the Environmental Research uh, Scientific Journal. And the first one is called 5G Wireless Technology. Is 5G Harmful to Our Health? Uh, this is a paper by Russell. And um, in the abstract, the, the, the most interesting part here is radio frequency radiation is increasingly being recognized as a new form of environmental pollution. Like other common toxic, toxic exposures, the effects of radio frequency electromagnetic radiation will be problematic, if not impossible, to sort out epidemiologically as there no longer remains an unexposed control group. This is especially important considering these effects are likely magnified by synergistic toxic exposures and other common health risk behaviors. Effects can also be nonlinear, because this is the first generation to have cradle-to-grave lifespan exposure to this level of man-made microwave radio frequencies. It will be years or decades before the true health consequences are known. Precaution in the rollout of this new 5G technology is strongly indicated. So basically, he's kind of saying some of the things that I've that I've already mentioned. There is that um, it's impossible to not be exposed to it anymore. So I mean, what are you going to do? Take a control group of people, and what do you do? Lock them in a Faraday cage for like ten years or something? Um, because like not enough real scientific research has been going on over the years. I mean, obviously some has, but it's been basically ignored in favor of the SAR rating and the heating effects of these signals, which is ridiculous because the power levels are so tiny, tiny, that naturally the heating effect would not be a problem. But because everyone was focused on the heating effect, they've ignored the other effects that the signals are having. And as we've seen, um, yeah, they're causing problems. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention here is the the sperm cells. Apparently the uh, Wi-Fi has a negative effect on sperm cells and can possibly even lead to uh, sterility in men. And worse than that, they actually pass that genetic damage onto their children. So basically in a few generations, like w possibly one generation, uh, we may have some serious problems reproducing because um, the other thing you need to keep in mind here is that like it's not like 5G is just going to come into being and that's it, you're done. Basically what's going to happen is uh, you're going to have uh, some old 3G sig signals for a while, then they're going to put 4G on top of it, then they're going to introduce 5G. And it's just like with Wi-Fi. Most people are using 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi is becoming popular now. 60 gigahertz is on the way, but when that 60 gigahertz arrives, they're not going to get rid of the 2.4 and the 5. So you're not going to be bombarded by only one frequency, but actually two and now three different frequencies. And of course they have different bands and channels, so the, basically the, the sort of toxic EMF load is going to be greatly amplified. And um, yeah, so probably not terribly good. 
Um, there's another study in here that he links to called the human skin is a sub terahertz receiver. Does 5G pose a danger or not? And essentially the gist of that is that um, the abstract contains the following quote, in the interaction of microwave radiation and human beings, the skin is traditionally considered as just an absorbing sponge stratum filled with water. In previous works, we showed that this view is flawed when we demonstrated that the coiled portion of the sweat duct in, in the upper skin layer is regarded as a helical antenna in the sub terahertz band. So what he's saying is that at 5G frequencies, your sweat glands actually act as a helical antenna and so your skin is, your sweat glands actually are going to be affected by 5G signals, which is like, oops, right? And that kind of, um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the non-lethal weapon, the skin heating gun, and it's like, well, yeah, that's, Jesus. Um, also, there's another, there's another study, human exposure to RF fields in 5G downlink. Um, and basically this paper is arguing the necessity for thorough investigation on humor exposure, uh, to downlink. Uh, basically what he's saying is that, um, basically it's, he's arguing that, that the potential health impact on humans, it hasn't really been significantly studied because all the prior research on, on RF fields in cellular communication systems have been focused on the uplink only the transmitting part and what he's saying is in other words like your phone is like you're sending an email or you're sending a, a, a picture or something when your phone is transmitting out that's what they focused on what he's saying is like no, no 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 you're actually saturated in the downlink direction whether or not your phone is actually receiving there are towers everywhere and and in fact with 5g um they're going to have up to 200 times the number of antennas because the much higher frequencies mean the rf waves pop they they, they propagate differently so in order to get 100 percent coverage uh, it's estimated that there will be 200 times as many 5G cell phone antennas, which means there's, they're, they're thinking of putting them on utility poles and stuff. So it will literally be everywhere and there'll be like no escape. Whereas right now you can live two kilometers away from a 4G cell phone tower and you have at least a slightly lower exposure. Uh, another paper towards 5G communication systems. Are there health implications? Adequate knowledge of RF, EMF, biological effects is also needed in clinical practice. Yeah. No shit. I mean, you got this crazy scientific peer-reviewed journals, papers, and all this stuff, and, and all this, like, medical and biochemistry stuff in there, and, like, I highly doubt that, you know, your doctor has anything, you know, if you tell him you've got, you know, oh, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, I've got tinnitus because of my Wi-Fi. They're going to look at you like you have seven heads, and, like, well, there's a paper about that, you know? They just don't read them, you know? When you go to med school, you... They just tell you, oh, SAR, specific absorption rate, if they tell you even that. And then, you know, you're... Um, preliminary observations, observations show that millimeter waves, 5G, increase skin temperature, alter gene expression, promote cellular proliferation, and synthesis of proteins linked with oxidative stress, inflammatory and metabolic processes could generate ocular damages and affect neuromuscular dynamics. In other words, 5G ain't better than Wi-Fi or 4G. And um, there's another another thing here about our guy, Professor Martin Paul. Um, he's basically saying, like, yeah, dudes, we know about, you know, there's 20 years plus of industry propaganda. Uh, we know that's all false now. There are effects. We can explain them. Um, these calcium channels and all this stuff, like, we know it's there. So why are we doing this? Um, good question. And... A couple more things here. Um, oh, this is fun. Moreover, widespread adoption of 5G cellular technology in the U.S. may have profound effects on our ecosystem by altering bacteria, possibly creating harmful bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. And here's, a, here's an interesting little uh, summary. Low-intensity millimeter waves used for pain therapy have side effects. The Russians have pioneered millimeter wave therapy using low-intensity millimeter waves, 5G, to reduce pain, including headaches, joint pain, and post-operative pain. If you use it in the right way, it can be therapeutic. But, uh, although the following review paper documents some positive effects from short-term exposure to MWT, uh, the authors note that there are side effects including fatigue, sleepiness, and uh, paresthesia caused by pressure on or damage to peripheral nerves. So they're trying to use it as a therapy. Oops! 
it's also causing problems. There's another study talking about how um, several studies on the effects induced by millimeter radiation, 5G type frequencies, and the new Wi Fi uh, have been reported in the literature. Diverse effects have been observed on cell systems, cultured cells, isolated organs of animals and humans. Um, the interesting thing is many of these effects are quite unexpected from a radiation penetrating less than one millimeter into biological tissues. In other words, these millimeter waves where you're told, oh, it doesn't matter because it only penetrates like one, one or two millimeters into the skin, they're basically saying, ah, we're actually seeing effects in the studies that we did that were totally unexpected. That in other words, just because it doesn't penetrate very deeply doesn't mean it's perfectly safe. It's still actually causing problems. Yeah, so um, basically, clearly a significant amount of accurate experimental work is still required in order to fully understand the interactions between millimeter wave radiation and cell membranes. You think? <sighs> you know, it's like, yeah, so after reading all that, and, and I mean, you know, you saw the papers, the, the references in here. I mean, like, this, there are tons and tons of studies that have been done, and this is kind of like a summary of those studies, and, and you know... <sighs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be using the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth or the, the you know, my cell phone if I, unless I absolutely have to. And, um, yeah, I, if you want to, that's fine. You can, um, you know, like 10 years from now, I'll probably be the only man on planet earth with any actual viable sperm cells left. I'll be like the only virile man left on the earth and, you know, don't worry, I'll repopulate the planet. No, but seriously, I'm, yeah, after, after reading all that and going through all of it, um, I don't know, you tell me, like, is, is Wi-Fi harmful? Um, I mean, obviously, is 5G you know, going to be harmful? Obviously, we need to do some serious studies. I mean, continuation of the work that's been done here, but that's being ignored, and, you know, we're still having, we're still dealing with, you know, the SAR rating, the specific absorption rate, and that's already been shown to be not adequate because you know even 2.4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz wi-fi um you know 1.8 gigahertz cell phone signals these are already these pulsed polarized blah 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 these 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 signals that already exist are having negative health effects on us and the only way to know for sure is to do a very thorough study but we can't do that because now we're all super exposed and no one is listening to these people these scientists and and doctors and such these researchers who are actually doing this work and saying hey hang on a minute this is bad and nevertheless like the industry and the people just push forward because you know they all want the internet of things i mean really <sighs> whatever so yeah that's pretty much it like i said i'll put links in the description to everything uh for more techie tips see scotty's tech.info thanks for watching see you next time